on Mobile Global Limited Q4 FY24 Earnings Conference Call. As a reminder, all participants' lines will be in the listen-only mode, and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is been recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Pratik Chaktap from ENY. Thank you, and over to you, Mr. Pratik. Thank you, Manuja. Good day, and welcome to the Q4 FY24 earnings call of On Mobile Global Limited. Representing the management today, we have FC Executive Chairman, MD, and Global CEO Radhika Venugopal. Global CFO. The call will start with brief update about the overall performance during the quarter, business activity, and future plans by FC. Radhika will update on financials, and then we will open the floor for Q and A session. I would like to remind uh, you that some of the statements made in today's call may be forward-looking in nature and may involve risks and uncertainties that we see. For such lists. And considerations. Please refer to the earnings presentation. On Mobile Global undertakes no obligation to publicly revise any forward-looking statement to reflect future or likely events or circumstances. Having said that, I now hand over the call to Mr. F. C. Over to you, sir. Thank you for uh, joining uh, this morning. Uh, as an intro, I like to say that uh, you know as most of you know, last quarter I was not happy with the results, so I cannot say much more of these results with two uh, percent and more. I still believe we can do much more than this. Um, for me, you know, uh, you know, steady growth is important. I don't like spikes uh, up. I don't like spikes down. Uh, so steady growth is important. Um, gaming business is growing uh, steady, twelve percent in the last quarter. Uh, the important thing to note is that we actually grew to uh, 6.75 million uh, net active subs, so a growth of 26%. The reason there's more subs than the uh, than the average revenue growth, uh, we're talking about 26% uh, net active subs growth, is because uh, the last portion of the quarter we acquired more subscribers than the first portion of the quarter. So obviously that will carry on quarter to quarter. Um, Overall, today, when we look at the gaming business, we uh, signed up in the last two years 150 operators, more than 50, 150 operators. We have live more than 100 operators. Uh, but the point I'd like to mention is that when we looked at optimized accounts for marketing, uh, we only have about 35 optimized accounts today uh, out of 100 deployed uh, accounts. Um, Obviously, that's uh, you know that's uh, that's a challenge. We we, are, we were planning to uh, to have way more uh, accounts that would be optimized on the marketing front, so it is taking more time to optimize the account. Uh, when you look at the actual cost to marketing, we run this quarter at 74% marketing on revenue. Um, our goal was to be around 50%. You know, we've said in the past that it takes us two quarters to optimize the account. So you could you know when you get a new account, you're over 100% marketing on on revenue the first quarter. Second quarter, you should be around 75, and, and third quarter on, you should aim towards the 50%. And after a couple of years, we should be below at 50%. Uh, now, you know, to, to, you know, I looked at every single account. Why, uh, why are we uh, not optimizing more accounts? Why is it costing too much money? And some accounts, uh, it's not a deployment issue. It's really the, 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 the metrics that are not uh, okay yet. So. Uh, you know, wasting marketing dollars has got no use for uh, for uh, for all of us. Um, so uh, clearly, we have to slow down on marketing in some accounts where you know the performance is is just uh, not there. You put the marketing, you don't get the revenues. It uh, doesn't make any sense um, uh, for now. Now we know exactly what needs to be done to get to 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 uh, to be able to optimize these accounts. So that's the, the the work that the team has to do in the coming months. And as I'm saying, you know, I, I don't want the team to rush and, and push too much money because we want to show a spike in revenue because that's going to come with a big spike in costs and, you know, it, it's not going to be a steady growth. So um, for me, it's, uh, you know, important to do this uh, smartly um, on every uh, uh, account. 
Uh, I believe also one thing we didn't do yet is the use of AI to optimize and analyze every single account and actually do you know campaign management with AI. That's something I'd like us to be able to uh, to really nail. Uh, you know, with the evolution of AI in the last uh, two years, actually even last 12 months, uh, there's a lot that can be done here. So that's that's one task the team has today. Um, Last point I want to mention is that we, we've been focused in the last two, three years really on gaming. Uh, if you look at our uh, traditional business, which accounts for most of the revenue still today, uh, it's very flat. And, and my perspective on it is that there's no reason it should be flat. It is flat today. Um, you know, I, I, we, we have for every single uh, legacy product line a nice evolution of where we see we can take the product and where we, uh, we can really grow revenues. Um, but the other thing also I'd like to mention is with the gaming strategy and marketing, basically what we've been doing for the last two years is signing up operator uh, 150 plus. But what we did is actually, uh, you know, increase our cost of deployment because we had to deploy in every single operator the billing uh, system and then start with marketing. So we, we increased both our deployment costs and marketing costs and a red news is following along, right? So I don't want to change that strategy, but what I want to add to it is that there's no reason uh, you know, I think a very big foot in the door of all these operators that we don't carry on and, and actually elevate our own product line in gaming, but also our a legacy product line in, inside these operators and have a way more strategic discussion whereby we could actually have revenues coming from the operators directly, not just from marketing, uh, you know, uh, through Google to get uh, carrier billing uh, revenue. So, you know, th this was 20 years history of on mobile getting revenues from the operator. You know, in the last two years, we switched over and actually really pushed gaming direct uh, to consumer uh, using carrier billing. Uh, but there's no reason we cannot elevate this uh, discussion. So that's really one and uh, a big push I want the team to do in the coming quarters, uh, which might not have an impact directly in these uh, in, in this year, but clearly would have a big impact in uh, in next year, 2026. So. So, in a view, that's, uh, that's where we are this quarter, and we'll pass it to uh, uh, Radhika uh, to review finance, and then we can go into our next. Radhika. Yeah, thank you, Steve. Welcome, and thank you, everyone, for joining us in this call. Let me share the key highlights of our finance performance for the fourth quarter and two year in this March 31st, 2020. Uh, Ma'am, sorry to interrupt. Uh, can you move the device near sorry. to you? The audio is not that clear. Yeah. So is it clear now? Yes, ma'am. Perfect. Thank you. Yeah. In terms of FY24 performance, we reported a revenue of 523 crores, which is a decline of 4.7% on a full year basis. This is mainly due to Vodafone, Voda Idea revenue loss, which was uh, offset by the growth in other geographies and increase in gaming revenues. Our gaming revenues constitute percent of our total revenue have grown by 95% on a YOY basis. A gross profit margin to that 53% on a full year basis. On the cost front, the manpower is down by 19 as we continue to drive efficiency and productivity across our business. Marketing cost grew by 14.9% mainly due to our marketing investment in our gaming products. The reduction in people cost and OPEX have uh, resulted in an improvement in EBITDA for the year which to that 28.3 crores, which is two times over the last year, which was 2x of last year. Our EBITDA margins is at 5.5% as compared to 2.4% last year. FI24 PAT, this year PAT increased by 126% over last year at 15.3 crores. We closed it at 15.3 crores with a margin of 3%. EPS is also up to 1.4 rupees versus 0 0.6 rupees in the last year. Now coming to a quarterly and sequential performance, we reported a revenue of 125 crores, which is a marginal improvement over the previous quarter, around 2.4%. And this is coming mainly for, from higher revenues in gaming. Gaming grew by 12.6% sequentially with a net active subscriber base of 6.75 million, which is a 26% growth over the previous quarter. Gross profit stood at 643 crores at an improvement of 8.8% .8 over the previous quarter. And the gross margin also improved by 305 basis points 
to 52.4 percent on a quarter on quarter basis. A beta for this quarter is at 3.4 crores, which is a significant increase over the previous quarter because previous quarter a beta was I uh, was at 2 million rupees. This is mainly due to higher revenues in gaming products and cost optimization. Marketing as a percentage of revenue has come down this quarter to 74 percent. This quarter, we reported a net loss of 70 lakhs as compared to a loss of 2.4 crores in the previous quarter. And this, uh, this quarter also includes an exceptional forex loss of 7.7 .7 crores, mainly due to the currency devaluation in, the, in our uh, entities in Nigeria and uh, Egypt. If I exclude this forex loss, our path would be 7 crores. Overall, DSO is also improved at 94 days as compared to 105 days in the previous quarter. This is the best in the last 12 quarters. During the quarter, we incurred R&D expenses of 14 crores as we continue our foray into the gaming space. With this, I will now open the floor for Q&A session. Thank you. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and 1 on their touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and 2. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Prakash Ramasheshan from Pragya Consulting. Please go ahead. Um, thank you for taking my question. I have a question to FC. Uh, um, over the past two years, we've been speaking about at some stage the mobile um, gaming business becoming larger than the traditional business. And uh, the numbers still uh, haven't really come through. Uh, I know that they've been hits this year on the Vodafone uh, um, uh, customer, uh, but um, even those should be fully recorded at this point in time. So just trying to understand with the base that we now have in FI 20, 2024, which includes the Vodafone hit. Going forward from here to 25, 26, uh, what is the kind of steady expectations you can see in growth both on the um, traditional business and the mobile gaming business. This broad top line and percentage EBITDA is all we need because uh, the, the hassle that we are having as investors is that we are not able to get a clear sight of how long it's going to take for the uh, for the hits to happen before the value comes through. So just some broad guidance would be useful, sir. Yeah, you see when, um, and by the way, I share the exact same, uh, you know, uh, impatience after this because we, we put in a lot of investments in gaming, right? So our expectation was that it was going to grow uh, faster. When we look at the plan, uh, it does take more than two quarters to optimize, uh, you know, an account, which to me is surprising. I was aiming to actually get it down to a quarter, and now, I mean, w with the past performance, we're we're dragging, right? I mean, some, some of the operators been uh, there for four quarters, and I don't see the uh, the performance really increasing. Uh, in some other cases, we've seen them boom up, you know, ten times other accounts. So I I, I know the formula works, right? It's just uh, how, how to optimize it. I was I was surprised, uh, you know, uh, uh, when I looked at uh, you know deep dive on the number of operators deployed over a hundred to see that only 35 accounts were. Uh, you know, optimized. And when I say optimized, they're not optimized to maximum capacity. They're optimized to a point where it's a decent revenue coming in and the marketing spend makes, uh, makes sense to continue spending. Uh, meaning that there's over 65 accounts right now, which is the two thirds of the accounts, which we cannot uh, market, uh, at capacity because it's, um, clearly having issues, right? To me, that's, that's a problem, right? You can't, you can't have, 
a drag of 65% of your uh, deployed operators that you cannot market because you have issues. So that's something the team has to fix uh, pretty fast. Um, sometimes they're really basic uh, basic items, right? Uh, like, uh, you know, we have uh, too many click posts to activate a customer or uh, the pricing is too high and, uh, you know, it's not the right pricing in the market. Um, you know, conversion for any reason to pay to, to uh, you know, to a monthly plan doesn't work. Um, so there's a lot of small items that um, can be optimized. Now, to your question and answer, I, I don't want to start what, you know, we've, you know some, uh, some of us have done in the past of really, you know, hyping up, you know, that next quarter is going to be awesome, next quarter is going to be awesome. It's, it's really not my style to give guidance on, on you, know, uh, you know, we're going to boom up. My, my aspirations and what I think we can do is still, a, you know, when I say steady growth, you see, right? I mean, I, I want it to be, uh, you know, every single month growing. Um, so, and I, I don't want to be, uh, you know, I, I'll come back to this, uh, you know, major operator we lost in uh, India. Relationship with operators is really key, right? It's not just about marketing. And that's why I, I really want us to meet all operators that we, uh, that we have business with and really make this more strategic. I don't want to end up in the same situation for any kind of reason. We lose a contract in the millions of dollars and, and we're back, uh, you know, two quarters to three quarters down. Um, uh, I, I really believe on the opposite that we can actually, you know, sign, you know, one, two, three million dollar contract. Uh, you know, by meeting uh, more uh, operators and, and getting this more strategic, right? So that would help the, the growth instead of, uh, you know, doing two steps forward and one step backward. Um, so uh, that's, I, I know it doesn't clearly answer your question. You know, I'd love to be able to share the financial model with all, but I'd like to keep it for now steady. All I can say is that, you know, from my point of view, every single quarter, I want to see a growth. I don't want to see a spike up in one quarter and a spike down the next quarter. For me, it's not the, the way to manage, right? So that's, that's what I want the investor to understand that, you know, for me, it's important to grow, um, you know, step by step, but always in the uh, forward direction. So, so, so just two more quick thoughts. One, of course, thank you for speaking about the strategic side, which I think is more important than the operating side, because once you get the strategic side right, the operating side actually follows from there and not the other way. So that's one. Well, thank you for reinforcing that. The other piece is uh, some key members of your management team left over the past two quarters. So any um, flavor you can give us in terms of what the plan is going forward on the management team? Yeah, you know, uh, let, let me start. I, I talked about Radhika joining uh, in the set of Ashish last call, but, uh, you know, just to be clear, I mean, Radhika has been there for since the IPO in 2008. She she, she knows in co the company inside out. Um, you know, I, I have issues with management not being in the office. Uh, when I say that, I mean, uh, you know, CXOs. Obviously, I'm not in the, uh, you know, Bangalore office, but uh, I am, as I said, in the uh, Madrid office. Um, but... It was very difficult to have this, uh, you know, a CFO based out of uh, Mumbai flying in, uh, in and out every uh, two uh, two weeks. Now Radhika is full time on it, very satisfied. Uh, you know, I'm not, she's beside me right now, right? But I, I find Radhika very solid. She's on the ball on every single item, so that for me that's important. So I think we have a good uh, CFO in in uh, Radhika. For the case of Sanjay, you know, just a bit of history, guys. I've been. You know, uh, you know, I'm CEO of, of Telesystem, my family holding also, right? We, we actually created on mobile uh, 24 years ago. I've been uh, executive chair since 2014, right? Uh, you know, when we did the offsite in 2019, December 2019, that's where we really decided to double up in gaming. We did the, the app and acquisition a year before that, and we doubled up in gaming and built the Onmo service, the gaming service in 2020. You know, I sat down with Raul, our employee number one on Onmo, and I, you know, I built the whole team, built the, uh, the whole specs, you know, got the Rob Zero acquisition so we could actually build the, uh, uh, the moments and get this working. So I, I obviously know, honestly, the, the company inside out. Um, Sanjay was on our board, right? Sanjay Bawajo was on our board, uh, accepted to join as CFO uh, when Ganesh left as CFO. That I'm, I'm going back a couple of years back, but just to remember, when we got into a COVID situation I, and, and we could not travel and I had an issue in the, uh, you know, who was the CEO, I asked, uh, you know, Sanjay to step in because we, I could not even get in town. I could not travel, right? Nobody could travel. Uh, so Sanjay, based out of Delhi, accepted, uh, you know, to, to step in as a, as a CEO uh, and during COVID. Um, 
you know, Sanjay, for a lot of personal reasons and the fact that he was based in Delhi, could not move to Bangalore either uh, and could not travel much either, right? So that, that puts a lot, a lot of constraint. When I talk about having relationship with carriers, it's very important, right? We need to meet them. Um, so for many reasons and personal reasons, Sanjay had to, had to step down. But transition-wise, there was no transition to do, right? I've been there for 10 years. Uh, you know, just in this trip here, uh, right now we're in uh, Dubai for the offside because it was a central place, easy to fly from India, easy to fly international in one hop. I, I used the opportunity to meet with four operators. You know, I went to Qatar, met the two operators in Qatar, met the two operators here in uh, UAE. Uh, I, I see exactly what, you know, we need to make to make this more strategic. Uh, and I feel that we can really elevate our game. So. It's important for you know the key management of the company to really get involved in 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 a real business and strategic discussion with the operator, right? So that you know Sanjay, uh, you know, so that that explains a bit, you know, Sanjay stepping down. And I also want to mention, you know, obviously I'm I'm not in the Bangalore office. I'm in uh, I'm in uh, Madrid. Uh, I, I will also have a new position, uh, which is the uh, president CEO, which will be based out of Bangalore. Uh, which, as a first mandate, will be to make sure that we, uh, you know, meet at least 80 of the 100 operators uh, we have deployed today, and you know, we'll, we'll do a nice uh, list out of the 150 that we've signed and see, you know, which one is really uh, strategic for us this year. But we have to meet them in person, right? For me, a Zoom call is not. Uh, it's very tough to be strategic on a Zoom call, right? I think we we got very used to it with COVID, and and now it's like uh, you know, I stay home and I do Zoom calls. But, uh, you know, it really, really, when, when we're talking about spending more time with, uh, with our operators and, and getting what I call million dollar deals. And when I say this, it's not a, a five year million dollars, more like a million dollar a year deal. If you want to get that kind of uh, relationship and deal, you have to be in person. You have to take the flight and be in their office. Right. Uh, you cannot do this on Zoom. So. So we have to restructure a bit our sales uh, organization so that it, it, it's really aimed towards being strategic and, and meeting, taking the time to meet, uh, you know, our operators. Uh, and obviously being, you know, based now uh, out of Europe, it makes me, uh, you know, way easier to meet all operators in Europe also. Uh, and, and, and we have LATAM that we've invested a lot in the last year that we have to do. So, you know, the globe is pretty big. Um, you know, we really need to... And that, that's why I did the changes on the top so that we can actually uh, start really meeting the operators. So I hope that answer your, your question. Yeah, yeah, yes, no. thank you so much. I'm actually based out of Dubai, so at the end of this call, I'll mail Radhika and Tatik and see if, you, if, you, if it's possible we catch up here. Thank you, sir. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, you may press star and one to ask a question. The next question is from the line of Bhavesh Patel from Patel Investments. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you for the opportunity and it is great to hear that we are on the path of improving profitability. Uh, is there a fair confidence you have in terms of uh, FI25 and FI26? will definitely have kind of a net profit and increasing. Uh, and also, I mean, it's great to hear your sales focus, but do we have our delivery and platform capability in place to serve and scale without uh, incremental issues? So, you know, I'll tell you a small story. I went to, um, I went to uh, Qatar to meet Vodafone Qatar, and I realized the platform we have deployed there is, is, is uh, doing millions of transactions. The uptime that we stated was 99.99999, and I said, guys, uh, and the reality is in the last few years, there was zero downtime. Um, wow. You know, and, and our customers tell us that compared to any other providers they have, we are the most solid one. Uh, I look at the product line that we have, you know, we have fantastic product. I look at the revenues coming from these product lines, it's awful. <laughs> you know, I'm like, guys, what, what's wrong here? You know, very strong product, but clearly there seems to be, you know, that, that's why I keep talking about strategic, right? There seems to be an issue on how we negotiated our contracts in the last few years, right? Uh, you know, I'll just talk about, uh, you know, Airtel, just it's, it's not, uh, but, you know, we, we, we do 20 million subscribers, uh, you know, with RBT, you know, in, in India. 
the contract is minuscule, right? Uh, how could we offer such, you know, good and solid uh, platforms with so much amount, so so low amount of money, right? Why we do this, right? So, so strategically, it's not just the product line that has to be strategic. I mean, the contract has to has to be strategic in terms of uh, and material in terms of dollars, right? Not just we do everything for free uh, or or close to right, very low uh, amount of money. So. So I, I'm very, to answer your question, I am very uh, confident on our uh, stability of our product line and the product line we have today. It's not a product uh, issue uh, here. So on your question on net profit, you would have noted that this quarter, excluding the for, uh, exceptional forex loss, we are at <coughs> seven crores of profit. <coughs> okay, okay. Thank you, Radhika. And and in that case, as an investors and and long term partners, do we expect uh, you know revisiting our dividend sharing guidelines as well? Of course, at the right time and not immediately. Boy, you know, as as, as you know, we have almost half forty eight percent of the shares. Uh, you know, I own. I, I want a dividend more than all of you. Trust me. So for me, it's, it's important that we can start uh, you know cashing in. Um, you know, one thing I, I like to be very transparent to, with uh, with all of us, right? And I, I want to highlight something also. I mean, we've invested a lot of money, as you know, on Onmo in the past, so our cash went there. Um, future investments, you know, it's you know profitability of all the gaming business is raising in 2025. Um, one thing that will hit our PNL, and I'm just I just want to be transparent here, is that we have to amortize this investment now coming in the next uh, in next year. So. You know, on the, our our depreciation will go up, but cash wise, I mean, it's not a cash out. It's just that we, we, the cash has been already out, right? Uh, so that will impact, you know, the the actual uh, uh, low, you know, below the line um, uh, profitability, the actual cash that we can generate. And then back to your answer, can we start paying a dividend? Hundred percent in my head, you know, as soon as we start going back the profit, uh, we bring back uh, a, a healthy dividend. Sure, and then it's great to know that you're meeting likes of global uh, Vodafone Qatar you mentioned, and you know that should help leverage uh, revisiting Vodafone idea as well, because they have raised funds and you know they are getting to a better shape than what they were last year. So, will definitely help us. Yeah, and you bring a very good point. You know, Vodafone idea raised a lot of money, right? So uh, there's no reason we cannot sit back down with them and see how we can re-increase our revenues. And uh, again, the same thing, but, you know, really, really make sure that we uh, capture back at least our share. Uh, I think uh, there's a lot of products we can help them with, right? So it's more, it's more a question of uh, sitting down and negotiating again, right? So that, that's on the agenda. Sure. Thank you, FC. Thank you, Radhika. And all the very best to all of us. Thank you. A reminder to all the participants, you may press star and 1 to ask a question. Ladies and gentlemen, you may press star and 1 to ask a question. The next question is from the line of Anshul Saigal. From Saigal Capital, please go ahead. Um, good morning. Uh, thanks for the call. Um, you mentioned that um, some, uh, uh, you know, in your discussions with some of the operators, um, we came to the uh, understanding that our products are, uh, and our offerings are quite robust. But um, the monetization of these offerings is not uh, as uh, as you would expect it to be. Could you give us some more uh, detail on this? What kind of products and uh, or some examples of uh, what you are trying to say here, please? Well, the first product, to be honest with you, is uh, is our gaming products, right? You know, when we meet the telcos today, they have like five, six gaming products. There's no link between each of them. There's issues on onboarding customers in each of them. And if we just say with the same pitch that any of them are there, we're just one of five, right? Uh, I don't like to be one of five. I want to be on top of all the other gaming service, right? So that, that's the first strategic uh, discussion where, you know, a lot of them have a vision on, uh, you know, 
a larger gaming platform. A lot of them have RFPs. You know, just as an indication, we have not entered any RFPs in the last two years. Why not? I mean, we, I, I like to be driven with a strategy, but on the other side, we have to look at what the operators are asking, and you have to make sure your competitors don't, you know, step in one step away to your business, right? Because then they're one step away to take everything. Uh, so that's, you know, so the gaming side for me, obviously, uh, remains a, a key aspect and, and can be more, more strategic. Tones, you know, the Tones business, we keep saying, yeah, Tones, Tones been there for 15 years. You know, I, I met other customers during this visit, and, you know, for them, you know, Tones business is driving a lot. There's a lot of features on Tones that they want. Um, you know, we have a product that we've been investing a couple of years uh, now, which is uh, video uh, tones, which can only, only be done with 5G with no app. Um, you know, we have a nice roadmap on tones, but we don't seem to, you know, push it and, and really, uh, you know, um, and when I say push it, I mean push the revenues, right? It's, uh, so that's something that rapidly we can, you know, we, st we still have like 35 accounts on tones. We can grow these accounts on one end and the other hand, we can upgrade them with video tones or at least we can at least upgrade uh, the way we market the tones uh, business and make sure we get more, right? Um, yeah. You know, services like infotainment, you know, infotainment is a very large, uh, you know, there's a very large uh, offering into it. There are very interesting platform on the, uh, you know, uh, uh, messaging side. I mean, we can do a lot on that front also, right? So all this to say, um, it, it's it's really not a product issue here. It's, uh, it's, it's really a, a negotiating issue. Right. Um, also, in your initial comment, uh, you mentioned that uh, we have so far been, uh, you know, we've been focusing on gaming over the last few years. And in the legacy business, we have been uh, slightly um, underwhelmed in terms of uh, how that business has performed. And that's largely because we haven't focused too much on that business. Um, what exactly can we do to grow that business? Uh, the conventional understanding is that that business as a whole is a declining business. So uh, it's not something that we can do, it's just that the market is declining. Can you put some more light on that please? You know, if we, I, I'm just, I really like the gaming business. I think we're at the right spot. I think it's a uh, long term, longer term business than, than we thought, right? Obviously, because we pushed it very hard. But again, I'm, I'm repeating myself, right? Trying to push a business it has to come on both sides. And I think we were uh, pushing too much on our strategy, not enough on our, uh, you know, relationship with operators to make sure they understand how strategic that was, right? So that we're not just compared as another gaming service. Um, having said that, Let's assume we would not have spent time, any time on gaming in the last three years or four years. Well, there's no way we would have let this, you know, traditional business decline that much, right? Although, you know, we say, you know, uh, you know that we really took care of it. I'm looking at this with the team objectively, and I, I don't think we did. I don't think we did a good job on uh, maintaining, you know, the revenues that, uh, you know, uh, every single line on the legacy went down, right? Uh, over the last uh, four years, why, you know, and why we let this uh, go down. So it's, it's, that's, that's why I want to bring it back. But instead of just bringing back legacy, I want to bring it back more strategically with gaming also, right? I really feel we have like three, four very solid product lines, including gaming. And, and, and that makes a very interesting discussion also at CXO level when you meet the operators. Um, so yes, I feel that, you know, this business could have declined less uh, or at least be stable uh, you know, if we, if we uh, you know, then, then what we actually did as a performance in the last four years. And then going forward, uh, how do you look at this business? Uh, are there going to be new lines that you're going to bring in here? Or, or, or from the existing lines, we can, um, we can grow this business? So, you know, going forward, um, you know, I, we have to, you know, rebring this, uh, you know, this, uh, B2B ma and, and customer management, uh, you know, uh, value in the company. Uh, you know, we have a value of customer first, but, you know, we mean ma most often in the last three, four years on gaming, we, the, the, we were talking about the end customer, not that much the operator as a customer. I think we have to come back with that B2B mentality of really making sure that we serve the operators well um, and that we, um, we do our job on, you know, explaining to them why it's so strategic and why they should pay us for it, right? 
so uh, as I was saying at the beginning of the call, I don't think, you know, our, our operating plan for this year is done. It doesn't capture any of this. Uh, you know, uh, the, the revenues will be driven this year by, uh, you know, maintaining the legacy business while we grow the gaming business with marketing. Uh, anyways, you know, by the time we meet the operator, agree on a strategic deal and they start paying us, it will have an impact next year, right? In 25, 26. Um, so, uh, in some cases we might be able to, uh, to, to get some, uh, you know, low ball deals, uh, you know, low, low hanging fruit deals that, you know, we, we will positively impact, you know, our core plan for the year. But, you know, if, if I want to be realistic, I think that the, the big impact, you know, of every effort on business development that we can do this year will be next year. Uh, so this year, the business is continue optimizing on the marketing front, 35 accounts going to 100, going to 150, right? So if we sign 150 accounts, we cannot spend deployment uh, time, cost, and maintaining costs on 150 accounts and just be marketing in 35. For me, that's a huge waste of money, right? Uh, so let, let's steadily increase that 35 up to 100 eventually. And I agree. And just to be clear, there's always going to be issues in some accounts. Some accounts doesn't work, right? You can have a 15, 20% of accounts with issues, but I cannot live with 66% of the accounts, 65% of the accounts, uh, you know, not being uh, uh, optimized where I cannot put the marketing. But then it's a waste of effort, a waste of sales, and waste of deployment uh, team, right? Uh, so that that's really the plan for this year. Right. Um, and um, what that may mean also is that um, even though we are spending more than optimal dollars on, on these accounts, only 66% accounts, um, they're not generating sufficient revenues. And so we may have to pull back on the marketing expenditure, uh, which may in turn pull down revenue, whatever little revenues that we're getting from uh, these 66% accounts. Uh, do you think that, um, that, you know, in doing this um, and focusing more on the more active accounts, uh, we will be able to, first of all, make good the loss of revenues from these 66% uh, accounts and beyond that uh, be able to grow? So, so, so just just to clarify, the the 65 or 65 percent of the accounts that were you know that are not optimized today, we're not putting marketing dollars today, uh, or very low, right? We're testing, but it's not producing. I don't want to be you know I've seen just on short charts, I've seen accounts where we market 200 percent, right? I was like, guys, stop this right now, right? There's no way we're gonna waste uh, that kind of money. So the money we have now on these accounts is very low, so it doesn't impact. So even if we stop today, you will not see a dip down. Uh, actually, we did stop today, right? We're, we're really focusing the money right now on these 35 accounts, which are optimized and, and can grow more. Um, uh, the point still remain, right? We still sign 150 accounts, and uh, we will deploy all accounts that we sign, right? If not, was useless to sign them. So I, I really need, and the team really needs to uh, grow these 35 optimized accounts, you know, uh, let's let's reverse the pie. Even if in the next year we we go up to 100, uh, you know, 150 deployed accounts, we need to have at least 100 optimized accounts, which would make it 65% of the accounts optimized, 35% not optimized. Right? Um, it's it's still a, a big endeavor for the team to grow from 35 to 100. Uh, you know, and 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 the impact on cash is direct. Right? You you put too much marketing, the uh, the money comes out rapidly. Uh, and if the revenue is not there, then it, it really comes out. If, if we put a bit less marketing on revenue, but the revenue is really there, then we get the benefit of the revenue and we have less cost on marketing, thus less cost uh, on direct cash flow, right? So it's very, very important that this job, uh, it's, it's one of the most important job we have to do this year, um, is, is to be able to, to, to really optimize the account. That's why I'm saying to the team, with all the AI out there, you know, uh, I mean, if we can have, all the uh, AI doing campaign management, find, finding the cohort, doing the campaigns, and really optimize, you know, it's going to be worth, uh, you know, we can get an uplift of uh, 25, 30% on the performance uh, minimum, right? And, uh, and, and really make sure that we don't waste money on marketing. Uh, so th that's why I'm putting a right. special angle on this. Th does this answer your question? 
Yeah, got it. So uh, what you're in essence saying is that we're going to be uh, putting in less dollars, but growth is um, is, is likely to come given that we are optimizing our um, uh, you know our accounts and growth will continue to come. Uh, if I get it right. Yes. And what I, w I don't want to start doing is managing quarters where we start the quarter in April, I'm putting full blown marketing at 100, 120%, you know, and I'm going all out beginning of the quarter to get the revenues. And at the end of the quarter, I stop all marketing, you know, and, in the uh, end of May, June, so that, uh, you know, I get the maximum benefit of the revenues in the quarter, but now I'm like, it's like driving a race car, right? Or a car and I'm pressing gas and then brakes and then gas brake in a straight line, right? Nobody wants to drive like this, right? So it's, yeah. it's a bit the same. So that's why if you look in this quarter, we have more subs at the end of the quarter in growth than the actual average revenue. Why? Because, you know, we've pushed the growth steadily and we didn't manage it for the end of the quarter, right? I didn't manage it as the 31st of March. I manage it as we're entering the year and steady growth, we keep on going, right? So if it makes sense to grow, we grow. If it doesn't make sense, we, we let go of the gas on one account and we put more gas on another, right? But so that, that's a bit, when I say steady growth, but steady, that, that, that's what I want the team to be doing. Right. In your guys, will gaming be 50% of our overall, uh, uh, or, or say, uh, so 30% of overall revenues, maybe around 50% of legacy revenues? Is that, is that a likelihood? Right now we have that. Uh, in the future, yes, I still have the same objective that we said, right? The only thing, though, is that if we start growing the legacy business, you know, with more revenues, then, you know, <laughs> You're growing both ball, but that's a very nice problem to have, right? But on a steady state, if if the uh, legacy business doesn't grow and stay stable, it is still our objective in the future years to to be 50-50. And this would be in the next two years, two years. Um, this objective is for how many years? Um, I, I, you know, I, I'm apprehending this uh, one because obviously my objective is to is to uh, is to do a good performance. But I, again, when I say steady performance, I, I think we can assume in the course of the next two three years. Let's let's be reasonable. Uh, you know, if we beat this, great. But that's uh, I'd, I'd say that's a, a fair statement. By the way, I know we've said that you know last year. You know uh, that statement, and I know last year it was said that we grew way faster. You know also. Uh, the only gap in our, you know, when I compare the year to what we have as a, what we had as a budget last year and what we have today after 12 months, the difference is, is on these 35 accounts versus 100 deployed, right? We pretty much deployed what we thought we would deploy. Uh, the problem we have is that only a third of them are actually paying off on marketing. That, that's the problem. Right. Um, my final question before I come back in the queue, uh, you mentioned that uh, uh, your aim is to have steady growth month on month, quarter on quarter, rather than spikes and then declines. Um, uh, what that means is, and, and, and then like Radhika mentioned, that if uh, if there is uh, no FX loss this uh, this quarter, then we would have a seven crore profit. Uh, essentially, what that means is that on a sequential basis, we will see growth in revenue after the whole of Vodafone last quarter, and uh, margins will uh, start inching up every quarter henceforth. Uh, fair assumption. So, uh, yeah, Anshul, uh, sequentially, that is our endeavor to see growth, steady growth in revenues quarter on quarter. You're right, 7 crores is a profit excluding uh, exchange loss impact this quarter uh, because NGN and EGP, both of these currencies uh, devalued hugely. Um, going forward, yes, we will not be able to comment on exchange fluctuations because that's beyond the control of our, our uh, you know, beyond anybody's control. Other than that, our endeavor is to grow quarter on quarter and have a steady growth. As well as margin optic, uh, Radhika? Sorry? As well as, you know, uh, while we will have steady revenue growth, uh, do we expect margin uptake also from here going forward, X of any uh, forex uh, fluctuation? Yeah, steady growth of revenues as well as margins is what we are, uh, uh, you know, aiming for. 
uh, having said that, I would also like to reiterate what ST just mentioned a bit earlier, uh, that we will have the impact of depreciating the investment what we did in gaming, which we capitalized, and that depreciation will start kicking in from quarter one. Yeah, that's that's all right. Uh, that's a non-cash expenditure, so that's uh, that is understandable. Fine. Uh, thank you very much. I'll come back in the queue. Thank you. A reminder to all the participants: you may press star and one to ask a question. The next question is from the line of Shailendra Agarwal from Agria Capital Advisors, LLP. Please go ahead. Yes, Shailendra Agarwal. Yeah, hi. Uh, sorry. Uh, just wanted to ask a question. The 7 crore exchange fluctuation that you talked about, uh, where exactly is that captured in your accounts? Uh, Uh, that is a part of forex loss. If you see the detailed financial statements, that is a part of forex loss. You will not find that in the investor deck because that's a summarized uh, form of the PNL which is given there. You can find it in the said uh, in the detailed PNL which is attached. Yes, so I'm also uh, so that's taken this quarter or it's taken previously. It's in this quarter on it. It was taken this quarter. Versus last quarter, we had a gain. Current yes, quarter, sir. we have a forex loss of 7.8 crores, and that's taken this quarter. Yeah. Yeah, so I am looking at your uh, consolidated results that you released to the exchanges, but again, over there, I don't find it. Uh, the profit loss is minus 6.8. Yeah, you see other expenses line? Okay, it's, it's being captured there, understand. Okay. Yes. Um, so when, when uh, there is a forex loss, it is clubbed with other expenses, and when there is a forex gain, it is clubbed with other income. Understood. Uh, second point that I wanted to make from it. Yeah, I, I can I can yeah. understand that now. Thank you. Uh, the second point that I wanted yeah. to make was uh, honestly for me the whole Vodafone India uh, saga uh, was kind of a bit surprising uh, from the perspective of. So ideally, uh, going forward, can get some disclosures on uh, kind of con revenue concentration that you have from top five, top ten clients. I think it's a very standard feature of a lot of companies, but uh, that's something that we don't get from you. Uh, so that will just help us kind of get a sense on, you know, if if a Vodafone India kind of situation was to happen again, what could be the kind of impact? Yeah. So. So we have our non-disclosure agreement with the operator. I'm not asking not you to disclose the name. Of, I am not asking you to disclose the name of the operators. I am just asking you to tell me top five operators or your clients how much revenue do they constitute, or the top ten how much revenue do they, do they constitute out of your total revenue. Yeah, sure. We will we will uh, give you the data uh, on that. Sure. Thank you. Thank you. A reminder to all the participants: you may press star and one to ask a question. Ladies and gentlemen. You may press star and one to ask a question. As there are no further questions, I will now like to hand the conference over to the management for closing comments. Thank you all for joining um, uh, this call. I uh, look forward to our next call, which will be in the uh, beginning of uh, August. So. Um, we uh, with this Q1. So uh, thank you very much uh, for your ongoing support in the company, and then we'll talk to you uh, this summer. Thank you. Thank you.
on behalf of on mobile global limited that concludes this conference thank you for joining us and you will now disconnect your lines thank you